Welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast. My name is Blue Westlow. Mr. Fruit is frozen on screen. Actually, he's not frozen on screen. He's just frozen. I cast Blizzaga no on him. And Rob is AFK in some strange unknown foreign land that is not really that strange. It's weird. Foreigner. The world is America. He's traveling to, to a CSGO major or something. I don't know. Yeah. This podcast, we talk Basketball. about how the games industry is crazy right now. We talk about how Overwatch flopped hard again. <laughs> And we really go into like a big spiral about how games have really struggled to, you know, really put fun first lately. And why Overwatch is a big, big symbol of problems that the games industry currently has right now. Uh, we talk a lot about how we are coping for a 2030 release for the right MMO. Dear God, please. Uh, <laughs> talk a little bit about, um, about Marathon and how worried we are for that. Um, we talk about the whole Marvel Overwatch clone, which I don't look sick. Touch a little bit on Into the, the Light, and then we into get into the, the into the. That's messed up, dude. That was the most emotion he gave that that Into the Light right there in the intro, and he sh and he he just took a big old load on them. I respect that man. I just, um, I'm just that's I'm just tired. You know, he's real. I'm tired too. I'm going to hit a nap after this podcast and we get into some Q and a, and we also have a little bonus section at the end. Mr. Root talks about his encounter with one of the most iconic video game bosses of all time. He did not expect her, but she, yeah, I think I was, him. I think I was more disappointed too, because everyone's like, Oh, you're going to struggle. And so I was like, Oh yeah. And then you did. <laughs> I'll show you. And then, yeah. And then I saw that one move and I'm like, I'm going to be here forever. Yeah, you guys are right. To all my yeah, haters. Like, to all my to all people playing my they downfall, were, you were right. My apologies. You were yeah, right. You, 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 you were spitting. So if you want to watch all that and more, stick around. Stay tuned. Eating better is easy with factors, delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. I've been really focused on trying to put on some muscle lately, and the Protein Plus options are so, so good. For those days, I just want to come home from a workout and not cook anything. I still want to eat good, so it's a pretty easy choice to warm up a really delicious, protein-fueled factor meal. No prep, no mess, meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Head to factormeals.com slash gg50 and use code gg50 to get 50% off. That's code gg50 at factormeals.com slash gg50 to get 50% off. GG Over Easy is sponsored by BetterHelp. If I had an extra hour in my day, I would absolutely spend it focusing on my mental health. As you guys know, on this podcast, we're all huge advocates for using every resource we can for our own mental health, and therapy is the most important for us. I'm the type of person to really spiral into minutia. I look really hard into conversations I have with people. I pick them apart right after I've been social, thinking about if I was awkward or weird. I'm really anxious about being social and that anxiety persists after I'm done speaking to people or even right before I start speaking to people. Through therapy, I've really learned to let a lot of these things go. I've also learned that I don't really like bogging my partner down with my ramblings about how nervous I am in pretty relaxed situations. It's still important for me to confide in them about my anxiety, but in the moments when I'm freshly anxious, I am not the type of guy to make sense, so I've really embraced letting things simmer down before jumping to conclusions. In short, therapy is great. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com gg today to get 10% off your first month. That's help, H-E-L-P dot com slash gg. Alrighty, hello everyone. My name is Mr. Fruit, and welcome back to the GG Over Easy Podcast, episode two hundred. And it's been two weeks, so I forgot. Oh God. Uh, two, two, 
two, two, one. one. Two, two, one. I want to say it's two, like, two. Almost sounds like T, T, T. Oh, my God. We're back. And as you'll notice by the deceased Rob, um, our boy's dead and gone. He's been having by a that, tough couple of weeks. He's yeah. been trenches, so. If you'd only seen a couple of his tweets a couple of days ago, you might genuinely be like, oh, my God, wait, he's dead. Um, don't think I'd be that nonchalant about it, but thank you. Secondly, he might as well be dead because he's in a foreigner's land. He ain't in America. Imagine he's out and deserting Germany. Your country. Uh, by death. places too. Like, come on. No I offense know, to German people. You guys are probably great. oh, all the offense. Yeah. All the oh, offense. okay, never mind. Well, Mister Fruit hey, said it. I've me. been there. They were very rude to me. Okay, that is. I was trying my best. I was trying my best. I mean. Yeah, I'm a stupid I mean, American. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to be, yeah, yeah, they were they weren't very nice. Yeah, that's you know what that's you know what Germans pick it up. You that's do all better. I'm do better, Germany. I'm sure you guys are do better. Everybody else, but that one train conductor, whatever, dude. Screw you, man. Yeah, what a jerk. And also that like taxi guy. No thanks. That wasn't very helpful. Yeah, what uh, a big stinky head. Right. Got him. That's real. Yeah, that's real. I got. It. Um, Rob's in Copenhagen. Uh, if you guys. Didn't pick up on that. He is going for the CS finals of the international tournament currently going on. I don't know the exact major, but in Germany, he's out there with his bruvs, um, his out having a gaff, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, cha- ch- his 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 chaps. Well, they waffle in about I don't know. And then, but the week before that, Rob was having some. <laughs> yeah. Rob was having some not poopy issues, which he usually does. Uh, I believe he was having stomach issues of a and, different variety. Uh, pretty bad stomach issues, and he was in the trenches. Uh, I not gonna go over too much because I'm sure Rob will give you a big, large rundown next week when he comes back. But um, we've been trying to record the podcast, and then last Friday, Rob was just like, "Guys, I'm sorry, I can't do this." And it's been a long time since Rob was like, guys, I'm really sorry. I just can't record the podcast. So then on Tuesday, poor dude. Rob's like that man. Rob's like that toxic masculinity dude that will like power through something, even if like he's struggling, but he's like, I got to do it. Like I got it. I have obligations. And then Something Tuesday, proof. Tuesday, same thing. He was like, guys, I'm really sorry. I, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't record today and I was like dude like just go we got we we can handle it big guy I think we'll be okay. as he's but, about to travel internationally the next day too <laughs> yeah like which he could probably be dying he'd be like I can make it yeah it's fine he, he would that, that dude would have one limb left and he would still find a way to like try to be like no nah, it's, it's like I'm fine I st- that, my god that's why we love him true i still think to this day about how he fell down stairs and his first thought was not <laughs> am i okay is Albus okay yeah. his first thought is i really hope my, my friends didn't hear me, hear me. <laughs> what an insane dude but hopefully the lodge didn't hear me fall hope the dude's having a good time in uh copenhagen and uh, I hope that you play better games soon, big guy. <laughs> Speaking of better games, Overwatch. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding just kidding. Oh. Speaking mm. of not better games, actually, probably the most dire it's ever been. Um, I was kind of shocked by this, but not that shocked. For those of you that don't know, Overwatch has officially canceled all of their PVE story missions. Dead and we're and not talking, we're not talking like, oh, we'll release them later. No, they have officially just scrapped it all after promising in Overwatch 2 that PvE was going to be a massive point for, you know, not just normal Overwatch gamers, but for the greater Overwatch fandom to enjoy. Uh, they, um, they decided to completely scrap it. Uh, what, months after they... Did this yeah. whole thing where they're Season like, yeah, we're going to release the missions for, like, what, 20 bucks? 15, which I'm still unsure. Do I get my money back? Like, 
it wasn't sold as like I th- it was sold as like, hey, you buy these and then you get the rest or whatever later. Yeah, and- that's the that's the craziest part. I love Ruben to death, but Ruben was like Ruben was Ruben was like fighting in the Overwatch trenches. He was like, This is my game. You just buy it one time. Like it's <sighs> and you know then they didn't even do that. So it's like, damn, you kinda got paid twenty bucks for like what, three missions? Basically. Yeah. So Which, I mean there's really no playability. There's really no way around it. It's just it just sucks. Sorry, Ruben. Your game kinda sucks, big guy. But hey, at least Yep. So unfortunately it It's vindicating <laughs> for all the people who were just like super cope, like see dude. It's PB crazy. PV wasn't canceled. Bro, PV's gonna come back. No, Bro, PV's it's... here. Well, it's crazy because um I I've been finding this is like a, a big problem in the video game industry where the I mean not necessarily the development team, but kind of development team and the people who manage the games like kind of like try to form this parasocial relationship with their their community and they really build this goodwill that is based on nothing. Overwatch specifically is like Overwatch 2, guys, we're gonna make it great. And then it wasn't great. And people were like, oh, but they're trying. Guys, okay, we're scrapping the skill trees for PvE. But we're still gonna release the story. Oh, that's okay, guys. You're trying your best. <laughs> guys, we're scrapping PvE. And I was like, um uh, What's the cope now? Uh, we're they're bringing back some Overwatch maps from Overwatch they're, One. They're doubling down on PvP. They're, they're just doubling down on PvP. It, it's a good thing because now all those five years that were wasted, yeah. they're going to put into PvP. Surely, it's like guys, well, you ca- like, I don't know, like the, the people keep eating the slop, and they're just like, mm, this is good slop, and like, because not because they think it the slop is good, but because. The devs are saying, guys, this slop is really good. And then <laughs> next thing we you know, like it. it flops. And I don't know. It's just it's just unfortunate. I really hope people stop getting taken advantage of, especially with Overwatch, because it's been like five years now going on five years Use. of them just like, <laughs> guys, we're going to do this. OK, we didn't do it, but we're going to do this. OK, we didn't do it, but we're going to do this. Okay, we didn't do any of those things, so we're doing something else. Look forward to it. Come on, guys. What I think, I believe in you. What like I? There's no defending at this point because what people fail to realize is the reason we got a equal, the entire reason Overwatch Two was supposed to exist was to introduce and create this PVE experience. That was the main selling point. That was it. That's like, that's what we're adding. That's why, that's how it's a sequel. And so instead, we have an Overwatch 2, no PvE. You know, some might argue less of Overwatch 1. I mean, they're reintroducing some of the stuff they took away, but also turned to 5v5, which I I don't know where the community stands on that. I don't know if they like that still or don't like like that. I don't know. Uh, But... Took away all that stuff and then essentially just made microtransactions more egregious, made it less friendly for people to earn skins and whatnot, introduced battle passes. Overwatch 2. The, yeah. Which the, took biggest, years. the biggest change to Overwatch 2 was the monetization. Yeah. It's like, what's the. Sick. It's crazy. The biggest thing they brought, like, what was the biggest feature to Overwatch 2? I guess the gameplay was, oh, it's 5v5 now, but really it was, guys, battle passes. Like, Microtransaction. And like, come on. And like, come on, man. Yeah, like the, this previous model was a little too friendly. A little too generous. Come on. People are like getting skins for free. No, 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 no. Which it, is, yeah. all they had to do was not do the sequel. Update Overwatch 1 on a regular cadence. Yep. Who knows where we'd be? It's, they, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, man. It sucks because the whole reason we didn't, like, the whole reason Overwatch development basically stopped was because they were working on this whole, like, cool idea of Overwatch PvE, or so they said, or we have all these cool things we're working on. And it's like, what? It's been like five years and this game has really felt like it's been in stasis 
outside of the 5v5 change. And yeah, like obviously like the art and the I mean like the art team when it comes to any development like they yeah, they they're making banger skins. Well, maybe not you know, maybe they missed a little bit with the Cowboy Bebop stuff, but <laughs> you know, yeah. some of them were really good though. I will say some of the Cowboy Bebop skins were pretty good, but like you know, the past, you know, the past 5 years it's like the content has been really just like new skins, which is great, but like gameplay content has basically yeah. been non-existent. It's 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 like um just like two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, three steps back, two steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward, two steps back, like constantly resetting. It just I don't it just sucks, dude. I I really did love Overwatch, but like it's really feels like especially with this PVE thing happening, like there's nothing. There is zero way to defend Overwatch. And obviously people will still find a way, but they'll, they'll, they'll still, still they'll still defend they'll it. They'll still but. figure it out, but uh, I don't know, man. I was actually really looking forward to the PVE2 and the skill trees and like really interacting with the heroes in a yeah, way. Yeah, I was that, down that I didn't get to in PvP and if anyone could do it like it's the multi-billion dollar uh Blizzard Activision and then it just didn't really just it just went nowhere it's just crazy to me that like a game that has so much money behind it can basically sit in cryo freeze for this long and like like that's just like that's just okay so crazy well, I listened to an interesting report that was like covering some of the news and drama with Overwatch 2 aside from all this like not just the report because it was leaked a couple of days before they officially announced the PvE cancellation but that there are other things awry at Blizzard you know wow spoilers um, but the, uh, management had recently in the past couple of years made a change to revenue splits because uh, I guess a big portion of Blizzard employees salaries they don't get paid evidently like anything crazy. Most of that bonus, most of their bonuses come from a literal bonus that I think happens um, every like semi annually, and the bonuses come from the the way the studio as a whole has performed all their games, and if it's doing well, then everybody gets a bigger bonus and. I guess that's usually where it all comes from. And that's what people are looking for. And also holds them over where it's like, I'm not getting paid much, but those bonuses, like, I guess there's a saying they have, you know, like better, better things are right around the corner. And I guess they're always, they're literally always talking about like the bonuses, the bonuses right around bonuses the corner and it'll all. be better. Well, they changed it to where it used to evidently it was company wide and it didn't discriminate for somebody in their specific, uh, development game so in this case they've swapped it now so when it comes to bonuses if you're on the wow team and bonuses are up wow's doing great sweet that bonus way to go guys and used to everybody would benefit from that and it would disseminate to everybody because we're all eating so like you know some people could do this and maybe it's not doing great but you know if wow is doing fine that's all right we're all doing fine well they changed it so now wow's doing great great job wow Overwatch, not doing great. About that, guys. So apparently, not this March, I think, was one of the bonuses, but previous ones, so around like six months before that, bonus came in for the first like true bonus since Overwatch 2 released, and apparently monetization, they didn't really quite hit their goal. Things were going great, but they're like, that's okay, we'll make it up, and like, they're like, they're essentially like, you guys weren't supposed to get a bonus, but we'll help you out. We'll find something. Here you go. Which I guess is nice or something, but first off speaks to already, okay, Overwatch 2 just released and they're already saying monetization isn't going so well and we're not making the money that we should be. Now come this March and the next bonus payment, same thing. Overwatch 2 is not doing well. And this time they just go, that sucks. Nothing. So everybody working on Overwatch 2 got no bonus, nothing. Everybody else in the company seems to be doing all right, especially like the WoW team seems to always be doing pretty well. But so in this case, it's like, well, that sucks. Not to mention all the 
people they had just fired and whatnot and laid off for canceling the PBE. So probably part of their thinking too is like, why are we going to give them extra money? We're about to fire them. So you got all that going on, which obviously can't help because then it also, I feel like it stifles creativity because in a company like that, you're not incentivized to take any risk. It works previously because just like that, you know, let's say you're working on Overwatch back before Overwatch came out, let's say. You're spending a lot of money on it. You're banking on it. You're like, oh, I hope, well, it's originally Project Titan, but they're no rush, blah, blah. So they're working on it. They're not making any money. But the rest of the company as a whole, you know, it's like a rising tide. That's like, okay, you guys are working on that. You're taking a chance. We believe in you and we'll support you. But now why would anybody do that if you're not going to get incentivized to try new things rather than just, well, this is the cash cow. Let's just do this. And this is the safe play. And we're just going to go over here. So that can't lead to uh, many good things as a whole in blizzard. And then there was also some rumors and stuff. And I guess one of the persons, his name's like Jason Schreier or something has done a bunch of investigation work on this specific blizzard and overwatch two story that he's making into a book. So he hasn't said too much uh, cause he wants to sell his book. But apparently he has a lot of info on the whole Jeff Kaplan situation. Oh. And he seems to make it, he seems to say something that it's not quite what we think it is. Uh, And it almost seemed to lead to believe that like maybe Jeff Kaplan wasn't, you know, the savior we thought he was. And it seems to be that at least from what we've heard and people are gathering that he might have been steering the ship in the wrong way. He was still heavily, he spearheaded, he was the one that wanted this PvE thing because apparently they had an internal goal. Once Overwatch came out, then they were looking at a way to slowly shift it, essentially back into Project Titan. A way to get it from here and then introduce PvE and all the story and then get back to what they wanted to do with Project Titan. So they had this long goal and here we are. But that's why it also seems so confusing too, like, and also why they seem so surprised by it at the time. And then they talk about retroactively, like they didn't know quite what to do. And it was a PVP game, but again, they wanted the PVE. So they were trying to service the PVP, but I guess teams were, you know, separated and splintered into different things. And so maybe that's why Jeff Kaplan ended up leaving either because he realized he wouldn't be able to do exactly what he wanted to do, or it wasn't coming together. Who really knows, but just like, what a fumble. What a, a massive fumble, too. It's the Jeff Kaplan stuff aside with, I mean, obviously we won't know until whatever comes out. The the bonus culture to there, how it shifted to, well, if your game's not doing good, sucks. It kind of, it's super predatory because it kind of pushes the, it kind of pushes responsibility onto your normal developers who are like very specialized in what they do. And it's like, hey, like, it's like a, it's like that workplace culture. It's like that American workplace culture. That's like, Hey, like give your life to your job and like, you know, be the, be revolutionary, be like invent cool shit to save this game. And it's like, dude, yeah. dude, we're under your management. What do you want us to do? It's, I don't You're know. Being man. punished for decisions they probably didn't make. hundred percent. It shifts the, it shifts the blame responsibility and ultimately stress onto people. And at the end of the day, like management is probably going to, management is probably still chilling on those nice bonuses at the end of the day. So Eesh. I don't know. American workplace culture, especially in the games industry, has it's like a magnifying glass into what is fundamentally wrong with the way CEOs, CFOs, and whatnot like their skewed perspective on capitalism. Because it's like, well, if you don't come up with like a cool idea, then like, why are you working for us? But it's like, dude, I. I joined this as I joined this place as an artist. What do you want me to make the fucking Mona Lisa and revolutionize how the game plays? Like what, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Like, as a matter of fact, it's, it's crazy, dude. Like it's, it's insane how t- as time has gone on, like more and more pressure and more and more 
responsibility has been put on workers who are specialized when like the big picture people are the ones who have slowly shifted, especially in AAA development, have really just shifted to not really being big picture people. They've really just shifted into how do we monetize this people? And lo and behold, well, especially like Bungie as well, right? Like when everything gets shifted to it, it's super similar when everything gets shifted to monetization versus how do we, how do we make this game fun and engaging from, uh, from like a purely gameplay story, yada, yada, yada loop perspective, the focus gets shifted to assigning people, Hey, like we need to sell this. How are we going to sell this in the gameplay? And that becomes people's job because I mean, unfortunately the reality is like if people don't, if people don't work toward what they're told to do, then you're going to get fired for, uh, yeah, this is a really cool story. Uh, this is really cool gameplay. Um, how does this sell the new ornaments? <laughs> uh, it's game games industry, super broken right now. I feel yeah, like so. we, especially over the past like year and a half, it's become such a, such a common topic constantly over and over and over. And we see these games just flop. I mean, obviously it's the recurring theme is live service games. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I just feel like a lot of these, like the people in position like the main creative positions really just see gamers as like yeah um how do we give these people a bunch of stupid fidget spinner toys <laughs> it's like dude i play games to like really connect with uh not just maybe not necessarily just characters but also like something that really makes me feel like i'm like a superhero in a video game or something that makes me feel like i'm accomplishing something epic and grandiose and they're like that is so cool man so for your character for only $15, you can unlock customization options to make yourself feel epic and cool. I already paid $40 for the game. Well, for the deluxe edition, which is $60, actually $70 now, you can also get some more customization options to make yourself feel epic, cool, and grandiose. You'll connect to your character even more with these really cool skins. Sir, this sucks. No, it doesn't. You already paid the forty dollars, and it's not refundable because it's an early access title on Steam. Which it wallets. just sucks when you're playing the game and you feel like you realize you're just a customer. Oh, hundred percent. When they make you feel like that, hundred percent. Smoking cannabis doesn't have to hurt. Upgrade to a freeze pipe today and experience smoother clouds without the throat burn, chest pain, or coughing attacks. Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more that cool smoke by over 300 degrees. Every piece is made of thick glass and creates clouds so cold you'll check if the bowl is even lit. The secret is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour and as smoke passes through it's instantly chilled for a relaxing experience without the afterburn or coughing. Now, I'm not quite the flower enjoyer I used to be, but when I do want to enjoy some cannabis, it's important that it's a nice, chill experience in every aspect. I don't want to deal with the annoying coughing attacks, and since I only use occasionally, that's one of the worst things for me. With Freeze Pipe, I can enjoy it all without worrying. American-owned, and with over 100,000 happy customers, Freeze Pipe is your solution to smoke like royalty without paying a king's ransom. Shop now at thefreezepipe.com and use code GG for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code GG for 10% off. Order today to get free shipping and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. My hydration habits are incredibly important to me. Since I've really been consistent going back to the gym, they're more important than ever. Usually it's a big old gallon I carry around, but sometimes it's something I'm sipping on after a workout. Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, Liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone. Now, I sweat a lot, just how I've always been, so I need to hydrate a lot. And Liquid IV is super clutch not just during, but after a workout when I've basically sweated out a puddle. 
Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, and it really makes a difference in keeping me ready to go during a long lifting session. However you hydrate, grab your Liquid IV, hydration multiplier, sugar-free, in bulk nationwide at Costco, or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code GG at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code GG at liquidiv.com. Which morale, uh, reasonably, was leaked to be pretty low on the Overwatch team. Crazy. But speaking of AAA games fumbling Ooh. and low morale, Ooh. you briefly mentioned it. True. There's been some leaks and stuff about Bungie. Yeah. And, uh, well, it just, in fact, I was looking at the list here, and it's quite a few news stories about AAA studios and not great situations. <laughs> What a and, shock. You're telling yeah. me that AAA studios aren't making as much money as this random small in two indie devs who made Powell and Helldivers that are raking in the cash because they wanted to make a good game first? That's crazy. It, that makes no sense. It's bizarre because we're in like a weird position right now where one video game industry and the tech industry as a whole has just been in a really tough spot. Lots of layoffs this whole past like year, year and a half. But then it's competing again with inflated budgets um, where they're talking about like it's almost unsustainable where it's oh, even yeah. like um, who, who made what the budget? Spider-Man uh, Insomniac games, right? Crazy, crazy yeah. requirement to be profitable. They still had layoffs, even though they're making bangers. And by all accounts, Marvel Spider-Man did incredible. But when the budget and marketing was like three, three or 400 million or something. The game either has to like, you know, just sell like more than hotcakes, especially when it's only on one console. Um, to where it, like even you can do that and they're still like, yep, sorry, layoffs. Like it's self not good enough. Like self inflicted. Um... Ah, geez, what's the word? I already lost it, dude. This is, it, it's too early in the morning for me to be thinking of big words. It, it, it's like it's like self-inflicted, um, not disappointment, but like expectations is a good way to put it. They're like, man, how come we can't reach these goals anymore? Because we made these goals that we want to exceed from two years ago in COVID era. Why aren't we growing that infinitely? The 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 concept of of infinite growth is also a huge it's not new right because like you have like the movie industry kind of always seems to be infinitely growing it's been like you know up and down especially lately but um especially especially the games industry just has this weird fetish of non-stop wanting to like exceed expectations for the thing before and it's like dude i don't know how to tell you this there's there's i mean they know this too and so that's why monetization becomes such a key factor but like there's it's you can't infinitely grow like there's no there's like so many babies popping out every you know every couple every couple minutes to to buy your new game to pay money to your new thing but well, it's, it's that idea of infinite growth with combined with one, everyone's just like, oh, let's cash in on this live service yeah, yeah. where we're getting to the point where I hear about another live service game. I, I think people fail to realize people can, like there's only so many people. There's only so many live service games that can like thrive. It's not like you're just going to make a live service game and then suddenly hundreds of thousands of millions of new gamers are just going to show up and play your game. There's only so much time people demand. can put yeah, into your live service game. When every game now wants to be the only game you play and take all of your time, shocker. One, that leads to some design decisions that may or may not work very well because that's a lot of it is like, how do we pad out time or how do we extract the most? How do we almost make them feel trapped rather than just like, oh, they're enjoying it so much, they're playing it that much. It's that idea with, yeah, like, 
people saw COVID numbers and like, oh, it's only up from here. And then this is always going to happen. And the insane need for like insane profitability. It's never just like profitable isn't enough. It has to be ludicrously profitable or like the profit margin has to keep increasing despite what might need to happen in order for that to be accomplished. But at Bungie, lots of leaks about low morale again and some crazy stuff with management with the Sony takeover uh, that apparently, you know, Bungie's, we, we sort of kind of figured, but has, it seems now more desperately than ever, all their eggs are in the basket of Marathon. And at the same time, they just announced and weirdly enough, we're like forced to announce because somebody like mentioned it and the brand new game director for Marathon that apparently shifted was ex game director from I'm sticking like Valorant and some other stuff. Um, but then was like, oh, after it came out, was like, oh, yeah, hey, I've been here for nine months taking over the game. Which is weird. They wouldn't announce it and like they felt forced to. But so a big shift in game director this far in, especially when we got in the trailers. Not, usually not good news when you change game directors in production. I rarely can think of a time where that was like, ah, that's a good thing. Oh, and in this case, apparently rumors were also that <laughs> they brought him in and they're shifting the game to a hero based shooter. Shocker. Put it on the bingo uh... card. So now it's a hero based extraction shooter. And again, probably easy monetization stuff, which is why like everybody does hero things. Um, but they've been shifting that overall reception is still a little mixed. mixed and is generous. I respect you. And at least if those, you know, the leaks and whatever are to be believed that it is pretty true. Everyone was like, yo, trust the process. But apparently Bungie's like, yeah, we don't know where we're going destiny. We like we can't rely on this anymore. And most people wanted to move on and go to marathon and stuff. So like a lot of this literally was like, ah, they're not even really sure. Like, hey, what happens next? So that's why they had the marathon going. The Destiny team's been down as a whole. Sony Takeover's coming. And apparently in 2026, when like final payments or stuff comes out, apparently a lot of the leadership has said or people have overheard, you know, leaked, whatever. A lot of the leadership are like, we're jumping ship as soon as we get that final payment. Like, we're, we're out. Which, again, how's that going to make the rest of the team feel? Or, like, people at the lower levels uh, of the hierarchy working at the, the company, hearing that even leadership's like, this is a sinking ship. It's Essentially, they're just like, from what it sounds like, even Marathon, they don't quite yet know how they're going to make it work going forward. It's just, let's get this out, leave, and they can figure out the rest. Apparently, like, that's what's going down. Uh, everything's on fire. And again, it's like, how do we get here? Uh, it, it, what happened? It kind of feels like over the past decade or so, everyone has kind of like taken the, the Epic Games route where not necessarily, like, don't invent the wheel, like, don't reinvent the wheel, like, just make the wheel just pump a fuckload of money in the wheel and make that shit gaudy as shit. Fortnite, one of the most successful games of the past decade, is hardly original by any standards, but Epic really threw in that level of polish and, and just really went all in, creatively, financially, and just said, BRs are hot, let's make a BR. And it feels like so many people now, especially now, which is around the time, like, you know, that people, well, I think devs have talked about how, like, you know, cycles for new games is like seven, eight years on minimum now, right? So, so like, we're... They almost have to plan for, they talk about, like, right now, you might be making a game for the PS7. Yeah. If you start right now, like, you're skipping a whole generation. It, it really feels like everyone is really taking that route. And now we're finally getting to the fruits of that labor where everyone has really just made, is like making the same game just with like tons of money, tons of polish, tons of 
just a lot of everything pumped into it without anything new coming from it. It's really just, hey, here's X game. Uh, it's like Overwatch, um, but it's a different art style. And that's really what it feels like to the point where like, there's no new ideas because of the fact that every game, because they're now in seven to eight year development cycles, like this has to succeed oh, financially. Yeah. We can't take a risk. We need to make this financially viable. What does that mean? No, we're not making a crazy new... We're not making a crazy new idea. We're not making a crazy get new game. We're making a game that exists, but we're making it better than what it was seven, eight years ago because we're a multi-billion dollar company and we're going to pump some funds into it. And then it's like games like Suicide Squad where... It's like, hey, Rocksteady, you guys made some really cool Arkham games, really revolutionized at a time like mid 2010s where we were really challenging the idea of what a video game could be. Yeah, stuff like Breath of the Wild, uh, Arkham was like, even before Breath of the Wild really was like, dude, whoa, like this is what open world games could be like. Not my favorite title, but um, uh, I think it was Arkham. Arkham City. Arkham, Arkham City was super gas Banger. um and like people are really just like throwing shit at the wall see if it's stuck rest in peace battleborn you know you tried your best but hey sometimes it doesn't work out and oh, like gigantic can come back come on man you have this crazy resurgence of games just like really trying out cool new ideas and seven eight years later we're getting the exact same games just with like a really sick ass coat of paint but not a whole lot of, you know, especially for, I know gamers feel it. It's like I, you play a new game. You're like, I think I've already played this game. <clears throat> and I feel like that's just where I'm in the cycle right now, which is unfortunate because so many studios saw, damn, like the Fortnite effect, like, or, or especially even what Bungie did as well, where destiny is hardly an original idea, but it took a lot of different, aspects of other games and like mishmash them into destiny which was you know and sometimes that's all it takes sometimes it's all it takes and that's unfortunately the reality is that's probably the most viable way to make money quickly without losing money and almost in a way like making sure we at least break even right so it's just weird it, it's it's it just really feels like we it just really feels like we've gotten to a point where games don't want to try I'm bringing it around the ship all right I'm bringing this I'm bringing it back to the station this is my this is the this is the this is the, this is the summary of my of what was before my thesis the TLDR is that we have really gotten to the point where games really focus on monetization and that really affects quality, not necessarily just because, oh, we need to make a game that has monetization, but to the point where it's like every single game that was being worked on seven, eight years ago is the exact same game we've already played, just with a lot of money thrown into it. And so now we're getting those games with no substance and all, give me your money. You played this game already. This shit's familiar. Give us your money and nobody wants to play it. It's a self-inflicted wound at the perfect time where COVID really inflated the wow guys games money printers money printers yeah. y'all this is easy and there's so many people playing and they're like guys Baldur's Gate ugh, it really pushed the boundaries of what an RPG could be why are they so successful and we're not Elden Ring doesn't even have a mini map ah! they're like huh must be must be a weird happenstance anyway Hell Divers 2 <sighs> There's friendly fire. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> there's no there's no side objectives listed on your map that say go here. Ugh. Like the problem is companies will like look at hell divers and they'll come to the they'll get to the conclusion the wrong way and be like, oh hell divers too is successful because it's a live service game. Yes, 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 like, yes. Oh, we should make a live service game. Instead of being like, Hell Divers 2 is successful is uh, because it's a cooperative game that does what it, it doesn't have any PvP. It's solely focused on PvE and the hijinks. 
and the friendly fire, which adds to that, like all the source, those things that make hell divers too, are actually fun, which makes people play it. Got more people power and then keep playing it. It's not, bro. Have you checked the hell divers too? Crazy live service game. Love it. The, yeah. The, like that's the not, you, people are like, dude, this game is so stupid and funny. Anyways, I just called down eight nuclear bombs on a giant ass Titan. Let's go play. But they don't, I feel like that's always the, how they come to the wrong conclusions. And I just want to echo the point because as you mentioned, like you said, because of the dev cycle time now, you're also putting so much more pressure on each game because it takes so long and you're because you're putting so much money into it. And we see it now in the entertainment industry, especially the movie industry, same thing, more money, but less risk. So a lot more of just things you've seen, sequels, remakes, same thing with video games, which is why you don't see a bunch of stuff out of left field or like new, a bunch of new inventive or, you know, fresh things because we're going to spend all this time. And, you know, I don't envy them, especially like, let's say you're yeah. a triple A studio right now. It's like, all right, guys, we're starting new development on a new IP. It'll be out in about seven, eight years. I can't, I don't envy them because it's like, not only that, you might have a good idea, but what will the gaming landscape look like in seven, eight years? Seven, eight years ago, Fortnite was about to come out. Oh, yeah. Think about how different the gaming landscape was. Had no idea. And then look how much changed because of Fortnite. So let's say you just started right before Fortnite released. I had this idea of a game, blah, blah, blah. Live service was like, you had Destiny and MMOs, but like, you know, weren't what they were today. And then the game, you're like, you're ready to ship and it's like, what is the gaming landscape is oh, completely different. Well, even worse, that's also a big issue that continues to come up is they still have to release the game. So, mm -hmm. so they'll be like in development, like they're making a BR because they saw how successful Fortnite was, but now we're in 2024 and the BR landscape is so full. There's really not room for another one. Like people are already like it's Fortnite, it's PUBG, it's apex. Do you really want to compete with all these massive BR Titans? Oh God, this is bad. We need to shift this to something else. They shift to something else. Hey guys, flip all these assets, flip everything that we've made. We're turning this into a hero shooter. It's like, oh God. Or they'll go a different route and they'll be like, we're going to turn it into a hardcore survival extraction a la Marathon. Yeah. And suddenly the game that had a creative direction that they've been working on for seven, eight years has been cut down to like two, three because they had to pivot. And they still and got to make the money. And they're like, oh, guys, let's just try and break even. Like, we've been making this game for seven, eight years. Like, oh, let's just aim for breaking even. People will try to make an argument, too, because I'll mention in a second about the Riot MMO, where people are like, there's a history of development changing direction and being able to turn around pretty quick. And it turned out well. And people like, because look at Project Titan. Within, within two years from changing that project, Overwatch released. Yeah. They made, it's like, so it's like, it can work. It's like, okay. Yeah, that's one game. Now think about all the other games, and I'm sure there's a couple more that have done it, but more often than not, that doesn't lead to a better game. And, you know, it reminds me of like Suicide Squad when I'm playing it. A lot of the decisions made aren't, does this make a, does it make it a better game? It's, does this make does it does it make the game more monetizable or profitable or marketable without thinking of how it actually affects the game itself? And so with you know all those devs trying to like curve, yeah, there's still a game there and you you can see some things there. It's like, wow, this really works. But then at times it feels like, or you could see how shifting this, had it been the original vision, I see how this all worked together, but now they had to make do and hodgepodge and, and it's just like, I don't know the answer. Do you just reduce budgets and reduce timelines and accept that like, you know, things will be a little bit different. I think that's also why we see double A and Indies again, uh, doing so well because, you know, for Indies though, bless their hearts, one to two man teams or even a couple their dev their dev cycles are still super long just because of their manpower. But between those and double A's, they're able to take more risk and changes, which is why we usually see those breakout hits. Because, you know, like let's like Valheim, right? A triple A studio could have done that. And 
maybe done that and more. And it would have been crazy. But they'll never do that. And even seen the success of like Valheim. Has any AAA studio been like, oh, let's do that? Oh, yeah. No. They're 100, there's 100% 70 years from now they saw Valheim and they're like, hey, guys, we're making a survival. Uh, we're making a survival medieval game. It's 2030. You guys are going to love it. Well, it's like Blizzard just canceling that survival game they had forever. Where it's just, they either don't bother or they do and it's too late. And like, I don't know. It's why it's tough, especially as developer and stuff. Cause like generally with the, with the time you're working with being able to like, that's why just some things just come out at the right time and hit at the right time. And yeah. other games that maybe would have banged just missed the mark. Cause they, released in the wrong window or in the wrong time or um but yeah that uh makes me want to talk about the news from the riot mmo league of legends uh trendamir the ceo one of the ceos of riot games came out on twitter to just address some few things and the tldr is um i'll probably have grandkids uh they're like yo so We've been working on this, as you guys know, AKA they're talking that they changed game director. He used to have um, Ghost Crawler, who went on to form his own studio now, and he's going to make his own MMO, so I'll be interested to see what he's done. But he left a little bit while ago, said he left in good hands. Again, who really knows? You're in the middle of production for your MMO, and now you're changing creative directors and stuff. It's one of those where it's like, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Did he move on because things were like settled and in a good place and he sees the vision. He's like, you guys got it from here. Or is it like jumping ship? You can never really know, but it came out that they changed directors going for a different spin. They mentioned who like has taken over and you know, they have an interesting resume. It's hard to say. Um, but they go on to say that they're changing the general direction of the game because they talk about how, and this was the quote everybody talked about where they said, we know like we've heard you and, and we feel like you guys would be, would, it would be a disservice if we just gave you a traditional MMO with a league of legends or rune Terra skin. We don't want to do that. And the back and a lot of the backlash comments have been like, no, actually that's like, that's exactly what we wanted. That's, what we're here for like wow but league that's what we're looking for so now people are concerned because they're taking the approach of like so we're going to try and do something like we want to do more and push the genre forward and define it our own way which if they if it they nail it that's sweet but the track history of riot if we look at it riot is really good at doing things people already do and then just making them a little shinier like they don't really innovate a whole bunch now, I would argue TFT is the exception. TFT came from auto chess, but TFT is definitely now spearheading the um, auto battling genre, practically solo. But aside from that, and that still came from, you know, auto chess, they just take a thing that's there and like make it a little bit better, like make it just, you know, rise version and it's more polished and here you go. So now people are worried that a lot of companies that do this, not a good track record. So if they're not sticking to what they're doing and trying to innovate a whole bunch, you can also just look back the past 15 years uh, after trying to chase wow, pretty much of people trying to do MMOs and spoilers. Most of them just fail, but especially the ones that have to rely on a gimmick or a, a change because uh, I read an interesting point where it's like a lot of MMOs have to carve out their name by adding some interesting twist or gimmick because that's how they'll market the game because they don't have an IP behind it. But league is the anomaly where like you, you don't have to worry about like here's a gimmick and like how our game is going to be different. You can just be like, Hey, we're a traditional MMO, but it's league. Yeah. You had the gimmick. Yeah. And you already are going to sell and people are already going to play because it's league of legends. It's, now people are worried where is it going? And more importantly, the upsetting part was like, we're going dark, even though they've said like literally nothing over the past like three years. 
that we're going to go dark. You're not going to hear from us for a while, but like, no, we're still working on it. And we're going to make a, like, we're going to make it. It's going to be great. But I'm sitting here like they, uh, there was that like tweet announcing it like two and a half. Three, and I joked about it, but like if they're going dark now, yeah, it 2030 20, is now like 2035, Mr. Fruit. Yeah. 2030 is probably like early at that. Like, cause shifting that big of focus, like he talked about, I think briefly, like some of the technological stuff and systems they've worked on are being shifted. And I'm sure assets for the most part, like that probably won't change too much, but easily puts it back a couple of years. And now it's also a worry of like, I, I would totally be down for them to like redefine what an MMO is. But also that scares me because most of them fumble. And so like for me, I like to hear that because I'd like to think it'll make a better game. But I also hear that and think about all the different ways now this can go wrong or can get stuck in development hell or like they keep trying to change and innovate and and then who knows where we're going to go. And it's just, I hope I live to see the MMO. That's it. I, I'm 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 kind of strangely strangely optimistic about it because you know like you don't just make an MMO <clears throat> like off a whim now especially MMOs especially are so expensive and if you fail like it's pretty much all in the dumpster um you know yeah in the past ten years or so the only exception to being able to really carve out its own path successfully is obviously Final Fantasy XIV. And that's, that's because of multiple things because one, yeah, the MMO was already going to be like relatively successful because just like Riot, just like League, it's like, oh, it's a Final Fantasy MMO. There's already been a successful Final Fantasy MMO. You had people from that MMO, you had Final Fantasy fans wanting to try it out. Obviously, it flopped really hard, but then you had a developer, had someone like Yoshi P, who was super dedicated. He's like uh, someone who plays the shit out of MMOs, someone who is a fan of the genre, plays the genre, loves Final Fantasy, really put his all into, hey, let's make a really cool Final Fantasy MMO that takes a lot of inspiration from WoW, but let's put our own little spin on it. Fundamentally, FF is so similar to WoW in so many ways, but it has small differences here and there. And those small differences add up to a game that really feels a lot different. And they've made a game now that is essentially carved out its own path as being uh, a very story-based MMO that a lot of people can play without really even interacting with others. It's it's a it's a really unique MMO where you can play it as like a, a you could play the main quests as a normal Final Fantasy game, but it also has these huge MMO aspects, the raids. Obviously, I love the story, right? I, I love Final Fantasy fourteen, but I also love you know, the main reason I love the game is because of the raids and, and game and all that good stuff. But it's like it's it's so hard to think that they would have someone with that much passion and influence to the point where they could say, Hey, whoa, we need to focus on making this a good game first. And I believe Riot definitely has that capacity. It's definitely scary when you see people talk about like, Hey, we don't want it to just be a cool league MMO. Obviously that's what people want. And like when you look at Final Fantasy 14, like you could boil it down to that as well, right? Like it's just a really cool Final Fantasy MMO and people really love Final Fantasy and it just works. But it, I think they could definitely like add their own spin in the same way 14 does where it's still fundamentally, right? Like it's still at its core deeply influenced by WoW, but can have like small differences that really make it its own. So hopefully it does that hopefully they don't try to like completely change the formula but like maybe they do maybe they do change the formula and they innovate like a completely new mmo that nobody was expecting hopefully it works out that way i think if any company could do it it's probably riot because riot is one of those companies where 
one of the few companies where they're just like, yep, uh, just kind of fucking go hog wild. I mean, we're League of Legends is so insanely fucking profitable. Like we can kind of just throw money at projects and do your thing, y'all. So I think they have uh, a lot more creative liberty than other companies. It's really easy to be. What's the opposite of optimistic? It's really it's really easy to be pessimistic when like you know a company has no plan B. Like this is their all in or nothing. Um and obviously everyone wants to do the riot and epic route where they just like take a really cool idea and elevate it by putting their huge resources into it. Bungie especially is super guilty of this, but hasn't really quite worked out for them unfortunately yet. Maybe eventually, but and so many companies want to do it where they just throw money into really cool ideas, throw their resources into it. But I think Riot definitely has a good chance at really making a cool MMO. I'm still looking forward to the Riot MMO because, like, realistically, not a whole lot of, like, really cool, high-quality MMOs coming out nowadays, and I love MMOs. I didn't realize I would be an MMO head at my big-ass age, <laughs> but that's how it works. Got an MMOs in my... Fucking, fucking mid late twenties, and now I'm deep in them. So, I think they could do it. I I'm still optimistic about it. At the end of the day, they still have quite literally six, seven years before this game ever comes out, which is crazy yeah, to I've, think about. Oh God, it'll be like at least like a ten year cycle. Hundred percent, at least hundred um, percent. But damn, that is crazy. It's so crazy to think that we have such limited time on this little dumb blue planet and game spend cycles half of it waiting for this MMO. Yeah. Game cycles are becoming so long that you could literally be like, damn six, seven, like people who are in middle school right now are going to be graduating from college by the time this game comes out. Well, it's like the, they, Bethesda briefly mentioned, like, hey, we're working on next Elder Scrolls. And oh, that was with, so long ago, dude. Yeah, with the guest release window, I think it'll be 17 years in between Elder Scrolls. Oh, 17 years. Rolled. Rolled. That's wild. Yeah. Where, and that's just like the reality of it. But I'm hoping with Riot and their MMO, there's the whole phrase, you know, like a customer doesn't know what they want until they have it. So it's more or less just hoping they can deliver on whatever this like shift or, you know, new spin is because like the way they word it and the way we'll just have to think about it for years until we get any sort of concrete evidence is really vague. And so it's like, what does that mean? Do they mean like an MMO light, you know, like, is it more instant stuff like destiny? that what they're talking about? Like, we have no idea anymore. Now it's just up for interpretation of like, where, how loosely are they going to interpret MMO? What does that even mean to them anymore? Like, how are they looking at that? What does that mean systematically and stuff? So I would like to think that it will just make for a better game, but I'm also worried that maybe it just wasn't going well. And so they're like, well, this is going to take even longer and shift. And so at the very least, it's probably a good sign because if, even if it was going poorly, it means they're like, okay, this is going poorly. We need to fix this. And I'm just hoping, and it's sort of like what you mentioned, if anyone's going to be able to do it, it'd be a company like Riot with the money and the resources. Because MMOs are just way too risky and way too expensive. So hopefully in this long dev cycle, they'll continue to be able to support it because this is definitely a situation like all these other things will help this thing in the meantime with the hope that when this comes out, this will bring everything else up with it. Or, you know, like they're definitely, I wouldn't say they'll be in a situation where like the right MMO will be a make or break, where it's like, if the MMO comes out and it's not the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, Riot's gonna shut down. Um, but also then again, I don't know, that maybe in six years, who knows where Riot is with their games and the yeah. industry. And uh, crazy to think about. So, yeah, it's it's so hard to, and that's just, it's in, impossible to grasp what that's going to be like. But it was certainly 
disappointing news because I was like memeing when I was like, haha, 2030. And now it's like, man, 2030 I, really, at best. I really am still really looking forward to it. Ah, I, I'm such a slut for Riot art style that I, that I'm still looking forward. To it. I just hope it's when I was thinking about it and I was like, one of the things that's crazy is like, I might not be doing content creation anymore by the time it comes out. It doesn't hurt. That's like six years. That's crazy I have no to think idea. about. Yeah. Um, Who knows? Yeah. I'd love to cover it, but. <laughs> I mean, hey, like. <clears throat> it's, it's crazy to think about, but like I imagine. People like us will probably always, you know, maybe be like, hey guys, like. Haven't heard from me for a while, huh? Yeah, well, I'm gonna stream this new game because I feel like it because I enjoy streaming, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, if it's I crazy could, to think I definitely that, will or something, but it's crazy to think that, like, yes, that so much time will pass that, yeah, you never know. Eating better is easy with factors, delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart. Protein Plus, and Keto. I've been really focused on trying to put on some muscle lately, and the Protein Plus options are so, so good. For those days, I just want to come home from a workout and not cook anything. I still want to eat good, so it's a pretty easy choice to warm up a really delicious, protein-fueled Factor meal. No prep, no mess, meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Head to factormeals.com slash gg50 and use code gg50 to get 50% off. That's code gg50 at factormeals.com slash gg50 to get 50% off. GG Over Easy is sponsored by BetterHelp. If I had an extra hour in my day, I would absolutely spend it focusing on my mental health. As you guys know, on this podcast, we're all huge advocates for using every resource we can for our own mental health, and therapy is the most important for us. I'm the type of person to really spiral into minutia. I look really hard into conversations I have with people. I pick them apart right after I've been social, thinking about if I was awkward or weird. I'm really anxious about being social, and that anxiety persists after I'm done speaking to people, or even right before I start speaking to people. Through therapy, I've really learned to let a lot of these things go. I've also learned that I don't really like bogging my partner down with my ramblings about how nervous I am in pretty relaxed situations. It's still important for me to confide in them about my anxiety, but in the moments when I'm freshly anxious, I am not the type of guy to make sense, so I've really embraced letting things simmer down before jumping to conclusions. In short, therapy is great. If you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash gg today to get 10% off your first month. That's help, H-E-L-P dot com slash gg. Smoking cannabis doesn't have to hurt. Upgrade to a freeze pipe today and experience smoother clouds without the throat burn, chest pain, or coughing attacks. Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more that cool smoke by over 300 degrees. Every piece is made of thick glass and creates clouds so cold you'll check if the bowl is even lit. The secret is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour and as smoke passes through it's instantly chilled for a relaxing experience without the afterburn or coughing. Now, I'm not quite the flower enjoyer I used to be, but when I do want to enjoy some cannabis, it's important that it's a nice, chill experience in every aspect. I don't want to deal with the annoying coughing attacks, and since I only use occasionally, that's one of the worst things for me. With Freeze Pipe, I can enjoy it all without worrying. American-owned and with over 100,000 happy customers, Freeze Pipe is your solution to smoke like royalty without paying a king's ransom. Shop now at thefreezepipe.com and use code GG for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code GG for 10% off. Order today to get free shipping and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. My hydration habits are incredibly important to me. 
Since I've really been consistent going back to the gym, they're more important than ever. Usually it's a big old gallon I carry around, but sometimes it's something I'm sipping on after a workout. Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, Liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone. Now, I sweat a lot, just how I've always been, so I need to hydrate a lot. And Liquid IV is super clutch not just during, but after a workout when I've basically sweated out a puddle. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, and it really makes a difference in keeping me ready to go during a long lifting session. However you hydrate, grab your Liquid IV, hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco, or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code GG at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code GG at liquidiv.com. Before we move on to q and I did want to touch on the Destiny 2 Into the Light uh, stuff they showed off. We don't get a whole lot of Destiny 2 news here. Besides You'll the... let me know. I haven't seen anything. I've just besides, been, like, the, besides the deeply flawed system going down at Bungie. Uh, but we did see some Into the Light. Um, the TLDR is essentially that we are finally, after... They're a little, they're about eight years late, but you know they made it work. Finally, getting a horde mode. Oh yeah, yeah. That's this is what I know. <clears throat> I saw Twitter mention horde mode, and they're bringing back sunset weapons, uh, and there's shiny variants, I guess, and then they're all going away, or at least the yeah, shiny variants. Yeah, and that's what I know. That's all I know. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, they they did this whole um this whole live stream. They um they talked about. How the horde is going to work? It, it, it's using the using PvP maps, I believe, or a PvP map, which is fine. I mean, like, where how else they're gonna, you know, have a bunch of oh Midtown, right? I think that's what yeah Midtown. Um, how else are they gonna? You know, I th- I think having like a limited map works really well in a horde mode's favor. Um, I will say I'm really fucking tired of hung jury. Being the weapon that gets brought back, dude. I'm so <laughs> fucking tired of hung jury. You pick all these really cool weapons to come back, which that sunsetting is still stupid, by the way. We should have gotten a lot of these back way sooner. But you bring you hit you pick all these really cool weapons and you pick hung jury again. Hung jury. The worst part. I'm getting into my scout rifle shit. The worst part <laughs> is, dude. Hung jury. That shit has never even been like top twenty-five scout rifles in this game, and you keep bringing it well, back in get D2. Em. Get them blue. It still it sucks every single time you guys bring it back. Stop bringing it back. Nobody wants a kinetic scout rifle. You guys suck. Stop doing this to me. You could have brought back the man and N, the goat, the goat, the man, the myth, the legend from the start of D two, and you bring back the hung jury from D one. Nobody you from get D1. the hung jury. And you're gonna like it. Nobody from D1 plays D2 anymore. We barely <laughs> even play D2 anymore, and we're shills for that game. We're shills. It's in the. That's yeah, how it bad was. it's been. You guys, uh, stop bringing the hung jury back. I miss scout rifle. That being said, I think it looks okay. Uh, you know, it's a free update. It's good. Uh, for what it is, for what it achieves, it aims to do, which is kind of fill the gap from now till final shape. Uh, I think it's fine. I'm not. I, w- I was whelmed. I think a lot of people were like, "Why are you guys being so shitty?" This update, you guys are expect way too much, and it's like, bro, don't get me wrong. I agree. I think people probably expect a little too much for Into the Light, but expecting too much from Bungie that's like I feel like expectations have been really low for them for the past couple years so let's not change that narrative let's be mindful that things are still in the trenches ask for more from their management team who continues to screw them over that being said Mr. Fruit is there anything else you want to talk about before we go into a little bit of Q&A uh just briefly it was revealed Yesterday, two days of the time we're recording this, Marvel Rivals, okay, yes, is yes, a brand new, I think six v six team based shooter. But it's here's the the elevator pitch: Overwatch, but Marvel characters. And you know what? I saw the trailer. I 
this is always the thing too is like some people are like ah at least I never see something like I hope that game's bad. I hope it's good. It looks pretty good. I mean, like there's no shame. Like it's it's a Overwatch UI and everything. It's just but you're Iron Man or you're a Groot or something. And you know what? Especially when like I just the, the thing is like I like Overwatch's gameplay. But it's not enough for me to just play it anymore or like right now. So like if I can get a new fix with some Marvel characters and if they do it right, the other thing too is like a near infinite amount of uh, superheroes and villains they could put in the game. The sus bit is it is uh, published by NetEase uh, who is known for some questionable monetization. So that immediately has me. That's the part where it's like, eh, but without having any of the details and only seeing like the gameplay trailer, uh, my interest is peak, and I hope it's good. Uh, it did look pretty interesting. I will say I knew you were probably going to like it because you, everyone, I don't know if you know this deep fruit lore, which is really not so deep because he talks about it a lot. <laughs> Gotham City Imposters. Oh, the proto Overwatch ahead of its time, man. very ahead of its time. And now, Mr. Fruit can get a superhero Overwatch that's probably Brave. not going to be as good as Gotham City Imposters, but still could be pretty cool. Still could scratch that itch Mr. Fruit has not had yet. Still could maybe oh. scratch that itch that Battleborn hole left inside of his heart still yearns for. The amount of games I would sacrifice to a pyre to get Battleborn back. <laughs> like I uh, like top ten games on Steam, I'd be like, yeah, let's go. The narrative is so Come bad that like a flop a flop level game like Paragon could find a resurgence and predecessor. The 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 level of of Overwatch erasure did to that game was just catastrophic. It's like that shit got wiped off the face of the planet and there's still like, it's still like a myth. It's like, uh, back in my day, there was this game that was beautiful. Okay, grandpa. It was limited and it only lasted for like four months, but it was beautiful when it lasted. It was battle. Go back to bed, grandpa. Yeah, it's like, it, it just, it's just a myth. It never really existed, but, but it, li it was, it was real to me. All right, Grandpa, let's get you back to bed. Anyways, queue up for Overwatch ranked. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. At that, at that point, it's Overwatch 8. Still no PV. Uh, 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 Ruben, don't watch this. So, yeah. At the very least, uh, it, was, it was a pleasant surprise. And again, like the, the, the fantasies that they could uh, accomplish with getting people to be able to play their superheroes and villains like that's what they already have going for them that's the selling point it's like hey you can play as iron man play as your there were a couple in there that i'm surprised are like in the starting lineup um yeah i think they're gonna hold a lot of the big ones probably by my guess either for future reveals or for like the first updates like the new here because like there wasn't like thor thor would or like like captain america captain america will come um they do have like iron man spider-man um and hulk but yeah i'm sure they'll they'll hold on to some of the the other people other ones people consider to be big for like but that's just it is if, if they can figure it out um but here's the two ways the game needs to succeed one it just needs to be a good big three booby things. bitches four things <laughs> uh one game or one is just be a good game or the loop is just fun fun to play two don't have the monetization or whatever be so predatory that nobody can get behind it or like be like, okay, I really can't like this is egregious. And then three regular content cadence just figured out if you're able to find out a way to on a semi regular basis, get out like a new superhero and villain. Just keep that up as long as the game is good and the money, like what overwatch one should have done and did for like the first two years, year and a half. Um, you can do that, then you got a pretty promising future. But who's to say? Well, I and I, I won't know until I play it. So. All right. First question from Chaz 
So I recently saw that Nikola Jokic plays League of Legends and he plays top lane. He plays Urgot and Ilawi. <laughs> For me, a non-league player, can our resident league player rate the MVP's picks? Any opinions on his choices? Um, well, I know Rob would be triggered by the word Alawi, and he would say that uh, terrible picks. Oof. Um, That's his goat. You can't don't talk don't talk down to his goat. <laughs> Can't be that bad. He appears to he appears to like lane bullying because they're definitely lane bullies. Like lane against an Urgot, bro. Like, who does that? Who plays Urgot top lane? Nobody likes that guy, and nobody really likes the lobby player. So he definitely plays some contentious Ooh. heroes. Um, but they're both pr pretty strong and good top lane picks, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's all nice him. I'm going to agree with everything Fruit just said. All right, we got a question from One Lax. Would you rather be your ideal height or have your ideal hairline that will never go bald? Also, just learn that if you pinch your nose shut and try to hum with your mouth closed, you cannot physically hum. If you pinch your nose shut mm. and try to hum with your... Oh, fuck, that's insane. Well, yeah, that's not fair. Good. There's no way to... I guess it's the nose coming... Or the air coming out of your... But that's like saying that's like saying yeah so if you yeah so if you go underwater you can't breathe <laughs> yeah but, then you stop breathing you can't breathe but uh yeah would you rather be your ideal height or have your ideal it. hairline that will never go bald? i mean i could do this one i would rather i have both of those things unfortunately <laughs> um oh, not unfortunately but i have both of those things so I'm gonna take that token and I don't know I don't think I'll necessarily want to be I don't know I've never had a problem with my height that's never been something that like I've ever thought about I'm a I'm a gentleman 6'1 so I've pretty much always been right where I want to be. be me. And then ideal hairline I guess I would like different hair I don't like my curly hair it kind of limits my uh, styling options because it's not quite not quite like flowy curly but not quite tight curls so it's this weird this weird like jonah hill type beat so my hair always is like i always just have like a short haircut so i don't really i don't know probably a different hairline maybe ideal hairline but yeah that's all i got um definitely never going bald though i got a lot of hair I don't think I'll go bald. If it's, I think I have like my dad's hair, it'll definitely recede. Um, I don't know, I'm not, I've never really been conscious about my height. I'm a fine height. I don't. I don't need to be taller. I don't really care. Um, plus, like, what would I say? Like, oh, I'd be taller so I could professionally play some sport. Bro, that time's passed. Right? That's not happening. Uh, so yeah, just by nature of not really caring that much about my height. Um, I guess the hairline. Mr. Root, you don't have to worry about your height because every single time you post a thirst trap, every single comment is wood. So. <laughs> but then um, maybe they show me, oh, you're not six feet. <laughs> what is this? Uh, We got a question from M. Just, just wait. I should disable the streamer mode for this. We have a We have a question from MC534. What would you consider your greatest achievement in life? Like what are you most proud of yourself for? How do affirmations hard? Dude, that's <laughs> that's impossible. I don't think I have a great achievement in life. Nor can I say Man, that's a hard question. This is hard. Really hard. I think... I don't know about... Greatest achievement... I think would be like, just what I've done on YouTube. Um, but then I would also maybe argue an, an achievement was... It's hard to know the exact things, but I think it changed the the course of my life for the better. It was back in... 
seventh grade and um i like broke up with my friend at the time he wasn't treating me right but he was my only friend i broke up with my only friend and i was so alone and sad um but because of that and then where it put me and then where i went I think I'm here today because of that. And I don't think I would have been had I stayed with him. And it, like, that's why I say like, stay like broke up. But like, what are, he was my only friend and we hung out all the time. Um, sure but, like that was like one of the hardest things I've ever done. But, um, I think like the ripple effects and then all the things that I had to change. Um, that would probably be the other one. Do your self worth. I did. Even though I didn't have any other friends, I was still like, I, you're my life friend, but I know I deserve better than this. I'm at a weird point in my life. Wow. I don't even think it's weird. I think I'm just, I think I've just, I think I've just kind of understood where I am in life now. I don't really want to achieve anything. I don't want to do anything great. I just want to be left alone, play video games and not starve to death. What am I most proud of myself for? I don't want to be proud of myself. I just want to fucking vibe. Everything is too stressful and hard. Everything yeah, I need to accomplish all these things. I don't want to accomplish anything. You know what I like? I like playing video games, shit posting. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Maybe cuddling, you know, cuddling with my partner. That sounds nice. And then looking at sh- stupid Dragon Ball memes about shit stuff. I don't know. I haven't achieved anything and I'm not proud of myself for anything. That's my answer. Hey, you're um, here right now. Uh, bare minimum, mean. bare minimum. No, no, no. Eh, okay, I did all right then. Um, all right, we got a question from XL Accelerate 03. This is for, it's so awesome having you back on the pod. I miss hearing about your bellowy deep voice along with Robin Blue. On my way to work. Jesus Christ, I fucked that up. I missed hearing your bellowy <laughs> deep voice along with Robin Blue on my way to work. Questions for the three of you. Mr. Fruit, have you checked out the miniseries Shogun? Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. Are you as hyped as oh, I am for how amazing it will be? Blue, do you feel that Netflix could make a good live action core series and with the same actress from the Avatar show? And lastly, for all three of you, if you could be a master at any game genre but only play that game for the rest of your life, what would it be? Also, Rob, you're killing on the ad reads. Keep it up. Looks appreciate that. Thanks, man. That was wrong. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned it in another episode, but yes, been watching Shogun, still caught up with it, still incredible. Love it. Do I think they can make a good live action core series? Core is generally a little more serious than Avatar, the, the original series. So, and that's kind of the route they went with live action so they could probably do a pretty okay core i still think they miss a lot of the a lot of like the finer details that like really add context to the narratives of of the original avatar so i still i'm still waiting for that season two and hoping they make it a little bit um but the question for all of us if you could be a master at any genre any game genre but only play that genre for the rest of your life what would it be I'm trying to think. I think I have two that I would narrow it down to. One would be like MOBA, but my worry is in 20 years, our MOBA's a thing. We're like, That's true. What does that yeah. even look like? I'm trying to think something like an FPS because I think even regardless of what games look like, there will still be some version of an FPS. And if I'm only good at one genre and that's pretty much all I'm playing, then I think the way to stay interested would be to compete. Uh, so then it would be like a competitive game. And uh, usually there's some variations of some sort of FPS in the competitive circuit during our time. Right now we have like Counter-Strike, Valorant, um, but something like that. And I think competing would be interesting. So probably FPS. It would be MOBA at this moment, but with no foresight which is why i say fps uh i don't know i guess i'm a mo but 
Maybe top probably, Frogger. Probably MMO. I mean, I'm already the master of my genre. I won't. Let's just say that. Hey, there's your achievement, Blue. That's. I feel I so. Barone. I feel so lame when I'm just like, yeah, I. F I will say I did. I did not think I could do some of these fights in FF, but I did them. So I guess I could. That's right. I'm a master of my genre. I'm an MMO warlord. Dark could never. He probably <laughs> did it with enough time, but he's he's IRL progging now, so. <laughs> yeah, he's he's moved on to different progging. Strachan asks, "You're given a pill that keeps you at one age of your life forever. What age do you pick?" I'm going back to like 26, 27. I feel like that's also generally regarded as peak, at least physical. Uh, and I felt like that was all before everything went wrong with my body. Uh, and still old enough to pretty much, I mean, like what else, what, nothing I couldn't do really. Um, yeah, I'd probably say 26, 27. Uh, I'm probably overthinking this because I'm like, if I went back in time, I've I haven't felt like I haven't felt as healthy as I do now in like probably ever. But that's all you can also change that. But yeah, if I were to go back to an age, I feel like it's pretty simple. I'd probably aim for like. Like 25, yeah, probably about, probably about that. Because I could, with the knowledge I have now, I would absolutely, like me at 25 with with my current knowledge, I would, it's over for you hoes. That shit is done. <laughs> probably at 25. So lame. That's such an easy, that's, a, that's such like a peak age. Like you don't, you just, ha you just got it. You just got it. You're, you're nuts. Um... Question from Gray. What's your guys' takes on the political and economic state of the world right now after the State of the Union address? I didn't watch it. Um, I could tell you that everything sucks and the world's on fire and genocide is bad. Um, the world is, as, as a whole, if you only look at what the news says, a pretty depressing place. Uh, and I wish... People would put other people above themselves when thinking about things. I wish people would have empathy for others. Empathy is so hard to see nowadays when people are so blind to what they want. <sighs> In the economic state. Economic state, we're all, we're, we're all fucked because we have, we have billionaires who are amassing copious amounts of money that could be used for social programs that would stop so many people from being sad and depressed and unable to fend for themselves. And also did I mention genocide is bad? Don't support genocide. That sucks. And you suck. Uh, let's make this our last question from Lumberlord. If you go back in time five years, what good news would you tell your past self to make them happy? And while you're thinking of that, edit after watching Fruits Drawing Up to video. Watching content where you can tell someone is genuinely invested in their craft is so enjoyable. That video is such an easy video to watch because I can really tell how excited you are about this process. Looking forward to the 100 day and or Discord update smile. Thanks, Home Reward. Thanks for watching that video. Glad you enjoyed. Um, as for going back in five years, um, the good news we used to your past self. I'm in a better spot with still cranking your wife. hog. <laughs> I'd say my relationship with my wife's only gotten better. Probably the good news, I'd say. The good news? Still falling more in love. Good news, uh, I'm in a pretty poggish relationship, and I have a big fat ass from doing squats now. And it's got a dumpy. I do have a diaper dumpy. I tried to think of anything physical, and I've like, I've literally just deteriorated. 
I, there's nothing physical that has improved. So I was like, that's not an option. <laughs> See, it's different for me because like I started at zero and like now I'm like moving up from zero. Whereas you're like, I feel like you're in a, you're in a constant yo-yo. Like you're in peak physical perfection performance, but at the same time, hey, did I mention this is what's wrong with me? Mike, uh, never mind. <laughs> that was a bad joke. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I hate it because That's... I know Rob's not here, but I hate it because like Rob will literally abuse the fuck out of his body, and this dude will still like this dude just be like. Yeah, I only slept three hours last night, but uh, yeah, I just pulled another all nighter after that three hours, and uh, yep, I'm gonna go sleep like a fucking baby in about uh, tonight. I'm you know, playing uh, twelve hours of CS:GO, and uh, I only got six hours of sleep last night. I think I'm dying. I don't get it. I don't know how. Like minimum, like seven to seven and a half. If I won't even function this morning, I was like. Is this what death is like? I think that's why I was shocked when you were like, "Yeah, let's go at usual time." And I was like, "All right, man." Like, oh, uh, I still have so much to do. Yeah, I don't know if you saw. I was freaking god. Okay, by millennia the boner before bonus section post Q and A because I actually really wanted to talk bonus. about this. Mister Fruit has finally gotten to the point where he understands the memes now, the millennia okay. memes. I watched every single pull as soon as you got there. I am the entertained. Move. Mr. Fruit God, is at dude. the peak part of Elden Ring where he is now realizing this game is fucking stupid. And I love this shit. How did you feel <laughs> the first time you saw that stupid ass waterfowl dance? Dude, my first thing was, sorry, what? Or like, huh? Well, the first one when I realized I'm going to hate this was, I was like, I died. I was like, Oh, well, I did more damage than that. And I fought again. Like, huh? I sh did I like have a weapon unequipped? I should be doing more damage than this. And that's when I look, Oh, you life steals. Yep. Like, okay. That's dumb. And then she does the waterfall thing. And I'm like, that's really dumb. <laughs> and that's still where I'm at. Like, I um I got real close. I should have gone to bed. Cause like I got to like attempt 20 or 25 at like 10 30. It's already like an hour past my bedtime. And I should have been like, okay, we'll come back. And I'd already yeah. gotten to phase two and did some damage, like for the most part. Okay. But that was the problem. I was like, I've already gotten to phase two and like I'd, it'll probably just be like another hour. Oh. Yeah, well, then it's like 1245. Uh, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I My stubbornness gets overwritten by my need for sleep. Pretty much yeah. any, because if I'd gotten like one less hour of sleep, like five hours, I would have done nothing today. I cannot function. I'm like, what's another hour of torture versus being able to do something tomorrow? Because I still have more work to do. Um, but so instead, the next like 60 attempts or whatever, I make like no progress. I was in a good headspace. I'm tired. And then I'm just like, I just, I just freaking moved, dude. And that's still it. Like, uh, the waterfall thing, I can pretty consistently dodge the second and third, but the first one, if she does it right above me, I'm just dead. I, and then uh, yeah. there was like one fight. She did it three times in one phase. I'm like, I'm just going to let, I lose those. What the fudge, man. Oh, and then phase two. Uh, it's the freaking ghosts thing she sends after you. Yep, her fucking Kage Boonchin shadow clone type beat. Yep. Or it's the same thing. I see her rise up and I'm right below her. I'm like, I'm dead. Whereas if I'm like farther away and I start to see her, I'm like, oh, okay, I can dodge this. But it's anytime I'm trying to do damage and then I see a certain move and it's just like, oh, I die now. I'm in the wrong position. Things are bad. Pray for me. And it just annoyed me because every other boss and every other move, I figured out real fast. I'm like, okay, no, yeah, yeah I got this. I got what this, the, what did, what'd you call it? The water, the who? So the waterfowl dance is like water her. Dance. Yeah. Yeah. Her the, fucking her like her, her death whoosh. by thousand cuts. 
Yeah. That move. And then, yeah, she's got her. Because I'm like, I should, I should, I shouldn't be getting hit by this anymore. What am yep. I doing? Yeah, you, you see that move and you're just like, well, don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, pray for me, all. And then, yeah, the, you think that's her most bullshit move, and it still is, but then, but yeah, then you see like she's like, oop, phase two, I've got a just as bullshit move. I'm gonna send out these clones. It's like, man, what the? Come on. It's even worse because you have elected to not use any summons. Oh, bro. I was saying, it's like, if I used a summon, I think I beat that 10 tries. I beat. Well, actually, no, I didn't use a summon on America. I used a summon, uh, a mimic summon, whatever, on the the two the double god skin. Mm-hmm. Oh first yeah, because fuck that. Yeah, beat him first try. Where if I have it in like any other battle, which is why I'm not doing it. I'm like, this is the last battle for for my pride or something. I don't know. I'm not going to use summons. I'm not going to use spells. I'm just going to use like my sword. And I've put myself in this position. I can only blame myself. Because, yeah, I'm sitting here like, bro, if I had, because it's not even the damage. It's just the fact that they can take aggro. Yep, yep, yep. If I had something to take the aggro, that, like, the fight's over. But it's Melania. You know, Sick freak. She has single-handedly almost half my deaths for this entire playthrough. Hell yeah. Up until that point, I did the whole game with, like, 250 deaths. Hey, I believe in you. I think you could do it. Yeah. If you be, if you could beat Sekiro, you could beat Melania. I believe in you. I know. It, it, it's just like everything else got pretty quick, got to phase two, but it's just the freaking dance thing where it just comes out and then sometimes I'm top of it, sometimes I'm not. And then the other problem I have too with phase two is if I get there, I can get there pretty consistently with a lot of flashes now. As long as I'm like dialed in, phase one's pretty clean. But it doesn't matter how many flasks you have in phase two because you almost never get a chance. Because they're just so, like, she's so aggressive. So you're like on one HP in a dream and it's not like, let me panic drink a flask. You still have to dodge and dodge and dodge and dodge and dodge. And you have to wait for the one moment she slams the ground. You do the AOE. That's the one time you get a heal. Oops. Uh, she just hit you once and now she regent half her health bar. Oh, God, that's, that's the other thing, too. It's so hard to tell, like, how much progress you made because you get hit by something, like, useful health. What the fudge? It's fun, though, and I'm glad uh, because it'll be a satisfying ending. Uh, like, it'll definitely be a pop-off moment. And that's what I was telling everybody else. It's been a fun game, but there, it, I haven't really had any pop-off moments. Because I've actually just, I've done pretty well. Yeah. Like the most pop off, I think, was like the tree sentinel. Because I was right after I got out of the gate, I had nothing, and I was like, screwed, I'm going to beat this guy. And I struggled the most against. And I talk about like in these games, the bosses I remember the most are the ones you struggle against the most, and then you finally beat. And Melania will definitely now be like the, thank God, ya boner. I'm free. I'm free. Except I'm not yet, which is also why I'm anxious. Cause like, that's the thing too. Last night I was like, I have so much work to do. Oh, and tomorrow I got, I just need to beat her. And then that's what I'm thinking too. Is like, come on, we can't waste more time. Beat her, beat her. And then that just makes it worse. It's like, we don't have to. So now it's like, I could boot up stream and I could beat it in 30 minutes or I could be there again until midnight. I don't know. Plus, I had to I had to have chat stop gambling because it made me feel worse. Um, it would be like the first one's like, does Mr. Fruit beat it in like 20 tries? And then I see all the people, the believers were like, yes. And then I don't get it in the first 20 tries. And now I feel doubly awful. Yeah, I'm you're, like, a piece, you're a piece right. of shit, man. Yeah, I'm like, I let down all these people that thought I could do it. And then they'd be like, okay, well, 30 tries. And then I don't do it. I'm like, oh, well, great. Now I'm like, so after like we were like 40, I'm like, you guys got to stop, right? This is only making things work. Because <laughs> now I'm disappointing more people. But really well, fun, regardless. Well, there's a bunch of people you can't disappoint, Mr. Fruit, and that's us. 
who are now going to be moving on because this is the end of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next week, I'm sure you're going to hear lots about how Rob pissed, shitted, and farted out of his rear and his front, <laughs> and that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. And also, and that's just going to be from the Germany trip. Then and he'll tell you about That's just from the that. Germany trip. <laughs> it's going to be a wild ride. Thank you guys so much for watching, and see you guys next week. Peace. See you.